Montana Cowboy Hall of Fame celebrated the 16th class of inductions into the Montana Cowboy Hall of Fame Saturday at the Heritage Inn in Great Falls. The inductees were chosen from a field of candidates nominated by the general public. Inductees are honored for their notable contributions to the history and culture of Montana. MTN's McKenna Holman is on the scene. 24 Cowboys were inducted into the Montana Cowboy Hall of Fame on Saturday. The Hall of Fame was an idea that came out of a, a small group that started out just to honor a local rodeo. And then we decided, uh, Wolf Point Wild Horse Stampede, and we decided um, that we, there was bigger, bigger need for a bigger thing. So we, we started looking and trying to branch it out a statewide thing. Um, our first induction was actually in 2008. Each year, 24 cowboys and cowgirls are inducted into the Montana Cowboy Hall of Fame. These individuals are recognized for their contributions to Montana's western way of life, landscape, ranches, and wildlife. When they called me up and said, hey, you're, a nom you're going to be nominated into the Montana Cowboy Hall of Fame, oh, I, Chance called me and said, Grandpa, he said, this just made my day. And I was so happy because of my grandson and uh, and I th and this has made my day. Even though I'm 98. So this is what being a cowboy is all about for us to pass it on to them and hopefully they'll ranch uh, and hopefully their kids will ranch. Founded in 2003, the nonprofit organization that is the Montana Cowboy Hall of Fame strives to preserve and pass forward the Montana Cowboy way of life and to celebrate Montana's Western heritage. After the values of honesty, integrity, uh, loyalty, all those things are, are um, things that, in, that are really what being a true cowboy is about. And More information about the Montana Cowboy Hall of Fame will be available on our website. In Great Falls, I'm McKenna Holman, MTN News. Time now to bring in forecaster Brianna Juno. And Brianna, it appears we may have some moderate snowfall on the way. Yeah, Owen, um, we do have some snowfall on the way, but luckily that is not happening tonight. It will remain pretty dry and fairly quiet tonight. And those temperatures are going to remain near average, eventually reaching above average on Monday. Um, but these breezy conditions that we are getting today and tomorrow will also help keep those temperatures pretty warm. Now, taking a look at your Doppler radar, like I said, pretty dry across the area. We probably won't see that snowfall beginning to make its way into the state until around late afternoon to evening tomorrow. Now, taking a look at your sustained wind, a little bit breezy on the Rocky Mountain front, 22 miles per hour along Cut Bank, 14 miles per hour along Great Falls, but pretty calm everywhere else. Currently, your temperatures are in the 20s and the 30s, but over in the teens on the high line. And we are going to see those lows tonight a little bit colder into the 20s and the teens with some partly cloudy skies. Now, expect some partly sunny skies tomorrow, but it will be a bit chilly. During America's westward expansion, black residents settled in communities across Montana, some working for the railroad, others employed by the Army, and many cutting out lives as cowboys. Due to racial tensions in the early 20th century, these residents endured much discrimination. But this led to the founding of the Ozark Club, an African-American nightclub in the heart of Great Falls. MTN's Tommy Lynch has the story. What is now a private parking lot used to be the Ozark Club, a racial barrier-breaking entertainment club back in the day. It's a story that camp shouldn't be overlooked, and um, not only about racial um, tensions and collaborations, but also thinking about music as an American art, jazz especially as an American art form and how music brings us together and breaks down some of those barriers. The club was opened the night Prohibition ended by Leo Lamar, a boxer from Chicago who decided to enter the entertainment business. He saw an opportunity as the Great Falls population grew and capitalized on it. He saw World War II as an opening because his club had been restricted to a colored club until then, but he quietly turned it into an interracial club where blacks and whites were both welcome. The club was open to all races and was one of the liveliest jazz clubs between the Midwest and the West Coast. However, because it was owned by blacks, its history, like much of the West, was not well preserved when it closed down. Well, it's important to, to remember 
the past and to, to learn from it. And a big part of that is the racial environment and the stories around that. In the early 2000s, historians began to recover and commemorate the history of the club, which is an important part of Great Falls' civil rights history. The Ozark Club was a huge step in building toward those later events that uh, allowed blacks to attend any church they wanted, any club they wanted, and live anywhere they wanted in Great Falls. Though the Ozark Club burned down in 1962, the history and importance of the club remains at the Great Falls History Museum. In Great Falls, I'm Tommy Lynch, MTN News.